Hey everyone, so this is going to be a new, not necessarily style of video, but new uh, content topic. I'm opening up an, a new front on the uh, Creative Outlet Hobby uh, YouTube channel here. And we're going to be talking about home theater. And this is something that I'll consider myself knowledgeable, but, but certainly not remotely an expert at all. I get onto certain forums and try to learn what I can about different components, and uh, I am in no way uh, an expert or even, I don't think I have the level of interest <laughs> that some people have on these forums. There are certain things I'll read and just think to myself, dudes, does it really, uh, really matter? <laughs> so, uh, so I, uh, my, my uh, theme is that... Um, it's an interest, but I'm not going to obsess over certain details within the home theater audio genre. I consider my tastes uh, mid-range, uh, certainly not expensive, extremely expensive hi-fi components, but I'll, I'll consider myself mid-range in, uh, in my purchasing practices around the home theater and audio equipment. So what this video is specifically about, and, and this is going to be a multi-segment video likely. Let me start backwards a little bit. A after uh, I've, I've had a home theater that has been assembled and, and taken apart um, uh, a couple of times and um, just because of different, you know, moving and you know, uh, family members not liking certain speakers in certain areas of the house. So um, my older home theater was in kind of a sorry state of affairs. So about a year, two years ago, I set out on trying to redo the entire home theater, basically swapping out all components, that kind of stuff. And what I found was that for what I really wanted out of a home theater, and those requirements are basically simplicity and single source of management, and really a convergence of technology. Old school, you know, receiver home theater technology converged with uh, modern internet computer technology. And about a year, again, two years ago, I found that it just it wasn't there yet. The receivers, um, the home theater components were not to my liking. And I've tried a number of things, and so at that point, I have uh, I held off on buying anything. I was just dissatisfied in the traditional home theater components, and specifically the receivers. Um, so... What I so the the other end of the spectrum is just using uh, a media-based PC or a, like a Microsoft um, Media Center PC. Those were just coming out at the time, and yes, I I actually have one of those, um, but don't those don't meet the full spectrum of a home theater for me. They're they're they're. Um, there's advantages to that in that it's centralized and easy to manage out of one spot, but it's also not integrated very well into a home TV. Um, the Y factor plays a, uh, a big part of it too. If it's not simple just to push a button and you know watch your TV and get going, if it takes a long time to load up, uh, no one's going to use it in the family, you know. And I don't particularly want to spend hours debugging the thing either. So there's a lot of disadvantages around the home theater concept using a computer as your sole source of uh, content. Um, so there's that. So let's break into this again. What I found lately is that receivers, basically the control system for all your home theater experience is they're much more uh, better they're they're more capable than what they have been meaning they are beginning to be networked they integrate video together 
they integrate audio together, of course. They've always kind of been known for audio. And they're more importantly integrating internet connectivity. This is, so this is phase one of my home theater rebuild project. What I have, so hurry up and tell us what you got, have here is the, the Denon AVR-4311CI. It's a network receiver, basically. And this is, um, I actually got this on site in Best Buy. So it's, um, it's about the same price everywhere for it. And uh, it turns out it's, it was just released in September. So I got lucky time-wise. And what this has unique about it is, this, again, traditional uh, home theater setup, uh, 11 plus different channels. You can program, program into it three different zones you can use, um, all kinds of inputs. I believe it's six HDMI inputs and then uh, two monitor out, audio outs. Um, I could be wrong, it could be seven. I'll probably do a more detailed review on this specific component if needed. But the other thing is that it has a wired connectivity. So it, it only does ethernet in the back. I can talk a little bit more about that later. Um, it's compatible with Windows 7, basically the um, DLNA uh, framework. Um, it has all kinds of advanced audio codecs on here. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's actually HDMI 7, 7 inputs for HDMI. You can plug in your iPod or iPhone into the front or back USB port. You can also plug in a hard drive via USB, which I think that's pretty handy as well. You have uh, all kinds of um, abilities to control that over menu systems, uh, either the video or the on-screen here. The other big thing is, over time, I wanted to make sure I get components that have the ability to support newer technologies. So this comes with the HDMI 1.4 compliance, which basically it'll support uh, 3D video. If, uh, if I wanted to do that, of course, I'd have to have the 3D content, I'd have to have the 3D TV, all that stuff. So that's, and I'm not certain 3D is the way to go yet. It seems kind of like a gimmick to me still. So we'll see, but I, I wanted the ability to have uh, that if needed. So it is 170 watts by nine channels, compliant with HDMI 1.4a. Uh, let's see here, an internet radio. I can stream pictures from Flickr. Seven HDMI inputs, two outputs. Um, it has Odyssey's Multi EQ XT32. Uh, it's basically calibration software, from what I understand. You have this uh, little microphone. I don't think you can see that here microphone that comes with it and you plug it in it automatically goes to a video audio the video on screen to, to do with the software but audio to measure the output of your speakers um, and it, it adjusts the EQ basically to where your speakers are and how they sound in different seating positions in your room so that's actually pretty cool and I did notice a quick uh, sound difference once I had done that. And this is phase one of my home theater project, but I do have some existing components that, other than a couple things, they are direly old and almost embarrassing. They're, you know, they're kind of antiques here. I got a VCR up here. <laughs> I don't have that plugged in or anything, and I don't even actually use it, but uh, it's still here. Um, I'm not going to show you the back of this, I don't think, today. It's a little hard to get back there now. The unit can do uh, speakers from two speakers all the way up to 11.2 channels. Surround sound playback, fronts and wides and highs and all kind of that stuff. 
I'll have to go into more detail some other time, but it has the ability for front channels, left and right, center channel, surround sound, uh, surround back, uh, front height, and front wide.